I was looking over our topology as we've been sitting here building it and working on different things. So one of the things that I want to do real quickly here while I'm uh, sitting here getting this situated is to make sure everybody's up to speed as to what we've been doing. And th the way to do that would be to type in, you know, what we've got going on. So right now we have RIP running here, RIP version 2. That's going to be where we have that. We also have uh, EIGRP um, uh, 1 running here, and we're in a Autonomous System 1 there. And we also have, we have EIGRP running over here as well. EIGRP 3, Autonomous System 1. So as I was going through it, I was like, okay, well, that that's great. We have our um, basic routing in place, and you guys have seen quite a bit already. Uh, you've seen me uh, turn authentication on and struggle with that. And it, it's not a struggle in a bad way. It's a struggle in the fact that it I don't I haven't done it in a while, and so the, the, the primary reason for going through this is to um, make sure that we can configure everything. So one of the things that I decided to do when I was getting, I only have like a video or a couple just a couple more videos on EIGRP to go until we're moving into OSPF. And I thought to myself, you know, what would be a great idea, or well, at least for me anyway, is to uh, put that on hold and we'll come back to it and get everything operational. So what we're going to do in the following videos, and you'll see this as we go through, and um, I'm going to set it up to where we'll get the basic operations going, and then we'll start getting into the tweaks and how you can affect this and how you can affect that. So far it's been in my opinion, CCNA sized, so we can test on different features and this, that, and the other. Um, so we've been working on very small in implementations, you know, here just in a particular section. And that's probably how it's going to be laid out in the exam. I, ha I haven't taken the exam yet, but and that, when I'm referring to the exam, I'm referring to the CCIE exam. So up at the top of your screen here, it's a CCIE lab topology, IP addressing, and interface IDs for full-scale lab. So that's basically where I'm going with this. So we have EIGRP running, we have EIGRP running. So now one of the, th the things that I want to do is we've also got RIP running. So the following thing that we're going to do is we're going to get OSPF operational up here. So we're going to make this OSPF, OSPF, and we're going to use um, process 1, OSPF 1, and then uh, this we're going to have area 0, obviously. We'll have uh, A0. And I could just probably just go area zero. And then uh, from there, we're going to move over and we're going to look at uh, OSPF area zero as well over here, but we're going to split it. So we're actually going to have area zero between here. So I'll break this down so you guys can see exactly what I mean. So I'll type in OSPF one area zero here as well. And then I will set, and that's going to be in this section right here. And then we're going to have OSPF 1 area, and we're going to have this is going to be um, 1267. So 1267. And the reason why I'm coming up with that one is because we have uh, router 6, 12, and uh, 17, so that's a combination of that. And then what we're going to do. Now we have a discontinuous setup. So yes, we will be using a virtual link for our setup here, just because of the fact that we can. And I figured I don't always try to set it up, but the majority of the time I that I do. And we're going to set up uh, area uh, that's going to be 177 here. So we will have to configure a virtual link to get the discontinuous areas operational. So that's what we're going to do with that. Now we will be using OSPF uh, OSPF uh, one area zero across the B MPLS VPN as well. We have to do that. Well, we don't have to do that. It just makes more sense when we do. Um, and then you'll see the uh, MPLS Super Backbone show up inside of some of the routing. Now we're going to do this, and I'm just going to get the um, the IGP setup set up so, uh, right now. We're also going to set up RIP um, in in here. So we're going to set up RIP v2 here, and then we're going to set up EIGRP here. EIGRP, and we'll say um, this will be uh, autonomous system one, or no, we'll make this autonomous system 
2 and we're going to go with that and then up here we'll make this OSPF so we'll make this um, OSPF 1 area uh, 345 now you might be thinking okay well wait a minute you've got this going across that um, the, the reason why you could do that is because of the fact that this is going to be its own network so these routers won't be peering to these guys with OSPF it'll be BGP here, BGP here, BGP here, and BGP here. It's going to be the MPLS stuff that we're going to be looking at. That's going to be uh, some BGP, some um, OSPF, um, and stuff like that. So we'll see exactly how that comes into play down the down the road. But we'll see exactly how that comes into play and how we can appropriate that and go from there. So the important piece to understand here is to see where we're going to be going with everything. So Throughout the rest of this video, uh, or uh, throughout the uh, the setups here, we're just going to get the basic routing working, and then we're going to get into the details of how everything is actually going to be operational. And I wanted to, to at least give you guys a breakdown as to how it's going to go, and where we're going to be going with it, because I think it's important to understand. It's not just making sure we know how to do every uh, all the configurations. And a friend of mine told me he's like, "Dude, I think you're jumping ahead." He's like, "I think you should just keep doing what you're doing." with uh, going specific to the protocols and going through, I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I would agree. But then once we start going into the full-scale labs, if we have too many, too much filtering and testing here, that's going to be something that we need to test on a, on a larger scale. So again, this is going to be built for a full-scale lab. So I feel like if we get the, uh, what I would what I would not do in the full-scale lab, at least it, uh, I, um, what I would not do, is I would not go through and start doing everything per per site. So I would get everything operational, then I would start doing my filtering. And the reason why I would do that is if you have everything built, and then you start implementing all of your services and your filtering and stuff like that, you could potentially break something before you even get something else operational. So by going through and setting this stuff up to where you're going through and getting everything operational from a Layer 3 perspective, and then you get routes to propagate and stuff like that. Then you go back through and you do your filtering. That's where it's going to come into play. Now, the one thing I do have, which I would re highly recommend you guys do, is when I set up, when I deploy this, when I, I when I upload the topology file and upload the initial configs and all that stuff, it's going to be in one um, one GNS3 file that I'll upload to like Google Drive or something like that. When this comes, when this goes up, I'll also have a picture of the topology. And you'll be able to open it in Paint and all that good stuff. So you'll be able to do that. What I would recommend you do, and this is where I'm going to do when I when we do the full scale lab, which I'm still writing, for the actual lab where we have requirements and restrictions and stuff like that. One of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to go through and um, I re would recommend always read through the lab completely from start to finish. Make sure you know where everything's at. Don't just start on task one and start going through it. Because I've I know a lot of people that have taken the CCA lab, that they do that and they find themselves in a, you know, they screwed up down the road. They have to actually pull something completely out, rebuild it. So it's easier to just take notes and say, for instance, between, where'd my okay there it is, for uh, let me grab my pencil. It's easier to see. Um, for situations like this, you might have to come over here and they might want you to do a, um. BGP confederation. So they might want to split these guys into a confederation, and these guys, you know, this one whole thing might be a confederation, and they might want to have, say, R32 and R29 are route reflectors for each one. So depending on how it actually would work, you could set that up. Would it be a real world best practice designed to do that? No, but you could do it. And that might be something that they throw at you. So if you don't do that ahead of time, or if you didn't know that ahead of time, and you just arbitrarily threw BGP in there and got everything operational, then you could be like, oh, that sucks. And then you have to go rip that all out and then rebuild it with confederations. So read the, read the lab from start to finish. This way here you can say, okay, BGP can fed. You know who your peers are going to be. You know who your, uh, your subatomic systems are going to be. And then you know who your route reflectors are supposed to be. And then you can go from there. And stuff like that. So it's going to be one of those things where as long as you know what is expected of you, that will be the the main thing. So 
I think that, for the most part, is where I, I come off of knowing the technologies ahead of time is going to be a valuable asset to you in the lab. And that's where we're going to be uh, focusing our primary, uh, all of our, uh, there's a word I'm looking for, and I completely don't know what I'm, uh, putting all of our focus is making sure that we know what the technologies are, and we will be doing all of the technologies. So going through the blueprint, we'll, we will cover all of these topics. So don't don't think that we're stopping, but um, we're going to be going through and getting this stuff operational. And the main the reason why I'm doing this, I'm actually going to break it a little up a little bit with the way the videos are uh, labeled. I'm going to uh, get uh, basic operations, you know, uh, layer three reachability or something like that. And so um, I find I found that doing it that way might make it a little bit more realistic in that. So that's where we're going to go with that one. And we will come back and we'll do convergence and scalability. I'm just going to do uh, get OSPF operational and then uh, BGP operational. And I'll, I'm going to record while I do this. So you guys will see exactly how you would do this, get it op operational, and then go from there. So um, one of the things that I'm not going to do right away is I'm not going to get um, uh, debating whether or not we want to do a confederation. Because we're going to do a lot of rot reflection. So, you know, I'm thinking confederation here, just just to see if it's going to work. Because I don't know if a confederation will work with MPLS VPN. I've never done it. So, it's going to be one of those things where, like I said, this is a way for us to test a lot of features. So, it's going to be our precursor to a full scale. The, the full scale lab will be a, a dead set um, or a set of requirements. This this topology and this series is here for us to try different features. You know, what's going to work, what's not going to work, and go from there. So it's more of a learning uh, aspect of it than anything else. The other one is going to be full-scale lab. Let's see what we can do and get and go from there. So um, that's that. I just wanted to give you guys a, uh overview of how that's going to work and um, get, in, uh, get into some... get into some more complicated designs and stuff like that. So, my main goal, uh, obviously, is to make the make our implementations more complicated than what you would actually see in the lab. So that when you get to the lab, you're not going, "Oh my God, I am not prepared for this." You don't ever want to walk into an exam for that. The very first time I took the CCMP route exam, I had that problem. I was not ready for the test, and uh, my my score reflected that. And so I had to wait a couple of weeks, and I read, or was it a couple of weeks? I forget how long it was between attempts, but I had to take the rod exam twice. And then I went in, and I knocked it out of the park the second time. And because the fact that I saw what it was that I was going to be tested on, and I went back and I studied it. And sometimes you have to, um, you have to do that. And you, you don't know what you're going to be tested on. So that's why one of those things where you have to kind of think, okay, what are all possible possibilities for me to have to throw in uh, throw out a topology so that's what's going on and we're going to start off from there and go go up and start building it building it out and getting everything operational